Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would be delighted to commit to making sure that the type, when, when, when someone is, is, is comes forward that witnesses violations of the law um, and at great personal risk to themselves, sees abuses of uh, power and, and brings that forward at their risk uh, to us that we um, get to the bottom of those. We would not tolerate that type of, of, of behavior and make sure that um, we do everything in our camp, particularly in this case, as we saw today, the, the need to make sure that we properly enforce the main standards act is, is, is just paramount. And when people come forward to help us do that, they should be embraced. And that's what I commit to do in this administration. Was he smeared? Dr. White smeared? Or is that okay? I want to know. I want to know how you view this as someone who manages a program because you're setting the tone for other inspectors. Come on now, be direct. Was he smeared? You know, I, Mr. Chairman, I met Mr. Wyatt first before this hearing for the, the first time. Are you familiar with the record of what was said by, about him by FSIS high official? Um, Mr. Wyatt, Dr. Wyatt came in and, and met with some other high-level people in the agency and, and brought these things to our attention in terms of the, what he presented in his testimony, some of the uh, uh, actions that he had witnessed and, and how he had done that. And, and because of that, because of his status as a, as a, as a whistleblower in those things, we have uh, begun an investigation. We're going to look into his charges and, and, and make sure that if there's information that we can use to improve how we do humane, silent, humane slaughter, we're going to do that. Why won't you address how he was disparaged? Why won't you do that? Again, I, I don't you know. I, I met him today. No, and, no, this is professional. This isn't whether he's a, a nice guy or what. This is about his professional work. That, now, I'm not going to let you off here. Why won't you address that? That, that concerns me. You're sending mis mixed signals here, Mr. Mann. In this administration, under this secretary, under this role that I have the opportunity to play here, we would not tolerate um, inspectors who bring forward humane handling um, complaints um, being in any way um, dis discouraged from that or mistreated for that or retaliated against that because of bringing those charges. I find that unacceptable and we would not allow that. Mr. Cummings, you can proceed. I'll come back to you. How long have you been in the job, Mr. Mann? Uh, since July. Since July. And um, were you familiar with Dr. Wyatt's case at all before you, before today? Um, the, the chairman just asked you a series of questions. And I was just wondering, were you familiar with the subject matter that he just talked about before today? Yes. And how did you come to learn about that? Um, after I saw the Humane Society uh, videotape, I first became uh, aware of it. Um, and I also became more aware of it when Dr. White came and met with some other officials at the department and brought some of his concerns uh, to us and um, became aware that, um, uh, of his concerns and, and made sure that they're going to be looked into thoroughly and that we get to the bottom of it and take uh, the correct steps. And so, and so what did you... And when was, when, when did he, when was that, that he came to, to you all? It was last fall. I, I wasn't in that meeting, so I don't know the exact date, but I would guess, I don't know if you Last know. fall? And tell me what, what you have done so far in response to what you learned. Uh, Mr. Cummings, um, there, there are two events that, that need to move forward together here. Sure. Um, the first thing we learned was that, um, Bushway was behaving in a way that we just found completely unacceptable. And Secretary Vilsack um, asked our Inspector General to begin a criminal investigation of that. And that criminal investigation is ongoing. And uh, Dr. Wyatt is, is, is part of that. And so uh, initially there was a period of time. That was referred to the Justice Department? It's through our Inspector General. Yeah, Inspector General, all right. Okay. All right. Um, at the same time, then, of course, Dr. Wyatt came to us with charges about how he had been treated that we also felt needed to be investigated right away. 
Um, but as part of a, um, the criminal investigation, we weren't able to begin our, our separate investigation until we reached a point in the criminal investigation where the IG's office enabled us to begin work on the charges that he raised. So that, that only happened in the last uh, month. Mm -hmm. And so we've begun that investigation as well. And we want to complete it as soon as possible. And as I was talking to Dr. Wyatt before that, I think the, 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 his experience um, the examples he has brought forward are extremely important to us in trying to design the main handling program that we need. Yeah. The, the, I take it that this administration, I hope, uh, you just said a few minutes ago, uh, has a policy of dealing with things a little different than before? Yes, sir. And can you tell us what the difference is? I mean, generally, I know it's... it's well, I, I, you know, not in the last administration, but I'm seeing the types of things that we wouldn't stand for. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, in humane handling, uh, we need to do a better job. Mm -hmm. And I think the reports that GAO has uh, provided us will help us uh, do that. You well, know, speaking, of, speaking of that, you know, in the GAO report, it finds that the inspectors in charge want more training on whether incidents require enforcement action. And it says, and I'm just wondering, is the department responsible for training of individuals uh, in, the, in the various districts? Yes, we, in, we in train everyone who comes in. And you seem, you gave some testimony that uh, you felt, you sound like you felt rather proud of the training. Uh, are you? It's taking place now? Um, you know, I went through it myself. And, and I found that enormously helpful, and I found that it enabled me to understand exactly the types of things that we should be um, making sure don't happen. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I was talking to Dr. Wyatt before. I, I would enormously appreciate his experience in terms of um, being in the field and, and having witnessed the training and how it uh, ends up in terms of the individual inspectors and the work they do. And if there are ways we can improve that training, I'm open to that as well. Dr. Wyatt, did you have a comment? You look like you want to say something. Um, no, I, I, I just prefer to wait until I have a specific, I, I'm fine now. What training does FSIS inspectors receive to ensure that uh, they are prepared to enforce the humane methods of slaughter? What, what is the training? Every inspector comes in and gets as part of their initial training, classroom training in the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act. Uh, which goes over, uh, for example, um, just their, their, their categories from unloading an animal off the truck um, as they're being moved uh, towards slaughter, the stunning that must take place to make them insensible uh, before slaughter. Um, so the, it falls into sort of three broad areas in terms of the, the environment that the animal is in. Um, how the animal is treated in that environment, and the stunning procedure, which is so critical because it must, to carry out the law, the animal must be insensible, not able to feel pain at the time of slaughter. So they receive a classroom training in all three of those areas. They receive classroom training on the enforcement actions they're to take, that whenever they witness um, um, a violation of the act, they need to write a um, noncompliance record. Or whenever they see an egregious violation, um, that cruel treatment of animals, for example, dragging an animal, the, 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 what we witnessed in that videotape, that they must, in that situation, suspend. Uh, they receive that. Then they go after they finish their classroom training. They have a week to two week in field uh, training as well uh, to take those lessons learned in the classroom and learn how to apply them in the field. And then we do a uh, refresher and updating training, as I uh, described we did last year, and we'll do again this year. One, just one last question. You know, one of the things that is sort of shocking to the conscience, Mr. Mann, is, is what I said in my opening statement. When you've got uh, an inspector standing there uh, observing uh, certain things that he's supposed to be stopping, and he's, he's almost a cheering squad for wrongdoing. I mean, that to me, th then that makes, that makes me wonder, how deep does this go? Is there money being paid? In other words, to allow those kinds of things to happen? I, and I don't know, I know you've got an investigation going on with a lot of things probably, but we want inspectors to be inspectors. We want people to do their jobs. And, and if they don't want to do their jobs, then they shouldn't be there. Because the problem is when they fail to do their jobs, they fail the American people. And I refuse to pay people to kill me. That makes no sense. 
or not to do their job. I mean, is that getting through to Secretary Vilsack and, and all the others? Well, I, I sh share your outrage myself. And as I said in my testimony, I think Secretary Vilsack said it for all of us at USDA and FSIS when he said that the deplorable scenes recorded in the video are unequivocally unacceptable. And as I mentioned in my uh, testimony as well, um, that as part of uh, not only the criminal investigation we've done, um, that we have um, uh, terminated one employee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Wyatt, thanks for your good uh, work on this. Just, I, I got, I'm sorry that I got here late, but what are the specific steps going forward you think uh, should be taken in order to try to avert this happening again? Well, there are several things. Uh, I mentioned several of them, I think, in my written testimony. But we do, I think it's extremely critical that we get an ombudsman's office in place, not only for humane handling, but food safety, some place where the inspectors can go, they, they can, if they have a weak supervisor that always grants appeals, you can't go above your supervisor. You're stuck. So we need that office where they have the freedom to go and somebody will listen to them, care about what they're telling them, and actually go to somebody in authority that will also take care of that problem. That's, that's critical. Uh, we need whistleblower law enforcement and enhancement. Um, I think it's important. The inspectors... It depends. A lot of small, medium, and large plants have a, a staffing shortage in the fact that um, the inspectors have a lot of work to do. They have mm -hmm. a lot of work to do, and most of their time is spent on carcass inspection duties. And so they don't have time to do the humane slaughter enforcement. And when they do have the time, as I explained in my testimony, they shut off the line, they go do their humane slaughter. Well, the plant managers know where they're at. They're not going to do anything. So that's a problem. I, I think we need... Um, for these chronic plants that rather than keep them in suspension and abeyance time after time after time, take the courage to spend. Take mm -hmm. away their grant of inspection. They shouldn't be operating. It takes courage to do that, and we Thank do you. need that. We need fines in place. Uh, I think I mentioned that suspension actions sometimes can cause more inhumane right. handling of animals than... No, I, I noted your concern about suspension sometimes yes. resulting in more... Uh, harm to the animals than if you allowed it to continue under close supervision. Uh, and do, uh, Mr. Mann, do you agree with that? Well, the point that uh, it, 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 sometimes in order to be humane to the animals, it may make sense to allow a plant to continue in operation, uh, of course under close supervision, uh, rather than impose a suspension where the animals are uh, then put in further jeopardy uh, in, in very inhumane conditions. Well, I, I do think that when it reaches the point where there's an egregious action and there's a suspension, that, that suspension is necessary till we can get the um, a commitment from the company to, to, to correct that. But I also agree with you, sir, that there, there are situations, uh, the animals are there, and the length of that suspension um, it could be result in further harm to the animals while that suspension is ongoing. Okay. Now, Mr. W or Dr. Wyatt, I understand the uh, uh, the uh, Vermont uh, Department of Agriculture uh, was was vigilant on this and uh, in, in, uh, in cooperative. Yes, they were involved in in the whole closure of the plant, suspension of the plant. Yeah, Mr. Alby, you he was good to work with on this. Yeah, well, I didn't have any personal contact with him, so, yeah, as far as I know from what I've been told, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Ms. Shames, the inspectors' union and consumer groups have criticized FSIS for not filling vacancies in plants and moving offline inspectors to fill gaps on the slaughter processing lines. That shift has come at the expense of humane slaughter and handling inspections. Are those criticisms substantiated? We, uh, Could you pull that mic close so we can hear yes. you? We found that FSIS is working without a current workforce plan to... What does uh, that mean? It means that it really, at, at this point, has not identified the workforce 
level and skills that it needs to ensure that it is uh, performing the humane handling activities okay, okay. that it should. Explain the implications of that for the consuming public. Uh, what this means and what we found in uh, an earlier report is that there are districts there are that, that are short-staffed and uh, to FSI. What does that mean? What, what happens though? It means that, uh, that food safety activities, humane handling activities may not be getting the due attention that they ought to. And in fact, in our survey, when we asked what the challenges were for following humane handling, uh, an overwhelming majority of the inspectors at the large plants said that they are hard pressed to backfill. Uh, when there are vacancies, when people are taking their leave, it means that humane handling oversight is shortchanged. Okay, so, uh, you, so you found inconsistent enforcement across the districts. You found that five districts overseeing 56% of all live sla livestock slaughtered nationwide did not suspend any plants during the study period. What does, that, what does that suggest about the adequacy of enforcement? Well, it shows that there are inconsistencies. For example, those five that did not conduct any suspensions were in Des Moines and Chicago. And those happen to be the first and second highest volume slaughter districts that FSIS has. So is this, is, you saw the tape, you saw the uh, violations uh, at, at Bushway. Was that just an isolated incident and there could never happen anywhere else? What we know from our survey is that there are inconsistencies across the board. Uh, we see it within plants in terms of the various responses that we got, in terms of the enforcement actions that would be taken. We saw that across districts. Uh, we saw that over time. When uh, there's inconsistencies, what, what happens? Well, the inconsistency is uh, deciding what action ought to be taken when an inspector witnesses a uh, humane violation. Does that put, uh, I mean, but at some point, isn't this a health issue? Uh, yes, the downer animals uh, roll around in, in feces and, and that can um, uh, encourage or, or bring about E. coli. Uh, we know from the Westland Hallmark incident that there was a recall of the beef. Um, over time, while there have been fewer recalls of beef, the quantities of the meat that's been recalled has actually grown. So uh, th there is a connection there. Okay, now, Mr. Mann, what does USDA inspected mean then? What, you know, should the public have confidence in that if you have so many deficiencies that, uh, that's being uh, pointed out by GAO? You know, there's a stamp. USDA inspected. What, what, what does that mean? It means something quite important for the public and something they what? can have confidence in. And, and something we're enormously grateful for the Congress in providing it to us. I, I had the uh, privilege before I came to uh, FSIS to do food safety at uh, Food and Drug Administration. Um, and the, what, the, what that mark of inspection provides is it does not go on the food until our inspector can assure the food is safe. You don't have that. Um, and other food. Now we did do a great well, what job. What if you don't have enough inspectors? Food. What happens? What if you have deficiencies? As GAO is well, pointing out. What is again, the USDA? Again, I'm listening and, and very interested mean? in. The, sorry. What um, does it I'm, mean? I'm very interested in, in their findings and looking into that. But again, you know, Congress has provided us um, a, a extraordinary opportunity and tools at, at FSIS and how we do food safety. It, we are required to do inspection of every animal, uh, livestock, uh, before it's slaughtered. Um, we're required to do carcass by carcass inspection, every animal. We're required to be in every slaughter plant every day. Um, th th those are great tools that Congress has provided us to do that. If, if we don't have enough inspectors to do, to oh, do it, okay. then we, the plant so, so shuts down. Does that down. mean there's a public health no, no, issue No, the plant here. shuts down. So, so I, I hear what she's saying. How many plants have you shut down? If we don't have someone who can no, no, put that No, no, name the plants that you've shut down. Just name, name a number of plants that you've shut down. Give well, me a list. Well, we don't, and, and it's because we do have enough inspectors. Pardon? If we don't have adequate inspectors, mm -hmm. if they're not there to be able to examine every animal anti-mortem, if they're not there to be able to do carcass by carcass inspection, that plant can't run. And we're very thankful to the Congress that it's provided us both that law and the resources each year to make sure that we can do that. So you're saying you don't have inspectors and the plant runs, but you do have inspectors and they do run. Say that again, sir, sorry. If you don't have inspectors, the plants can't run. That's right. 
But it, and so how many plants have been shut down? For that reason, none that I'm aware of. Okay. You're short of inspectors. I, no, I, I didn't say that, sir. You have enough inspectors. Then why do you have deficiencies? Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking, I, you know, I want to read the report carefully. And because from, you have, you, from the draft, well, we didn't see the final, but in the draft, I thought there was a lot of good information there that will help us do a better job. And, and uh, you know, the president with the Food Safety Working Group, the Secretary Vilsack, and the instruction he gave me when I, read, when I came to the uh, department, the reason I came in, in to government back again to do this work is because of their commitment uh, to make sure that we provide safe food and humane handled animals. And so if there's lessons to be learned. But I do know, sir, that one thing that we have is uh, having worked at uh, uh, FDA and others where they have to go about food safety in a very different way, but the way we're able to do it, where Congress has in the law required that we have inspectors in those plants continuously each day and has provided us the resources to provide the inspectors is an enormously powerful tool, and we have a commitment to the public then to make sure that we're Let doing an outstanding change, job. Uh, you've reviewed numerous noncompliance reports other FSIS data. You've interviewed hundreds of inspectors. Based on your findings, do you think a slaughter plant owner faces a reasonable chance of suffering severe consequences for repeated abuses of animals and violations of the Humane Slaughter Act? Well, that is actually a recommendation that we made in 2004, that FSIS's guidance need to be clear in terms of when uh, an enforcement action should be taken. Uh, I think the Bushway example illustrates what we mean by this. Uh, there were three successive suspensions at Bushway before uh, more uh, drastic action was taken. And this is what we're getting at when we're saying that the guidance needs to be clear in terms of uh, when an action should be taken. Well, well let, let me follow up with that. Do you think FSIS has in place the oversight and tracking capabilities necessary to know whether or not the kind of violations we've seen at Hallmark Westland or uh, at Bushway are isolated incidents. Inspectors do keep track of the time that they spend on humane handling activities. They do that in 15-minute increments, and FSIS can report that. But what we're finding is, and I think this is a rich source of information that FSIS has not taken advantage of, is reading through the noncompliance reports themselves. Uh, this is a responsibility that has been delegated down to the district level. Uh, we feel that if it were looked at from a departmental level, that the anomalies, the inconsistencies that we just described could help FSIS target the resources, target the training, take those actions that would help better its performance in terms of humane handling. Thank you, uh, Mr. Welch. Uh, Th th thank you. I uh, just have a few more questions here. Dr. Wyatt, in your experience, what actions taken by your supervisors and management of F at FSIS have been the most counterproductive to the mission of enforcing the Humane Slaughter Act? The most counterproductive is they actually encourage the plant to obstruct the inspector's um, work. They That's encourage the, the plant to do what? Would you? They actually encourage, by not supporting the inspector when he takes an enforcement action, they're encouraging the establishment for that action and further actions just to push the line in, in terms of egregious humane handling or any humane handling event or food safety. If you get, in my case, I was always shot down, so to speak, by my supervisors. I'd walk by a plant form and they'd laugh at me. I'd go up to trim, I'd, I'd give a rail inspector his break. Plant farmer would come up and tell my trimmer, this guy doesn't know anything. Don't trim what he tells you, just trim what you see. I mean, that's an example of the most egregious action a supervisor c can take, because when you don't support your inspectors, you're just as guilty as breaking the law as the establishment, in my view. With what you have gone through as a yes. whistleblower. Yes, sir. What did that USDA inspected label come to mean to you when you look at it after your experience? Uh, tell us about that. 
It's a very good question. We have the vast majority of our inspectors are terrific. I mean, the inspector at Bushway. They, they want to enforce the they law. They do, they and do they work job. very hard. They work very hard under extreme difficult situations, circumstances, angry plant managers, the gambit. So they work very hard. So I'm very confident in that stamp of inspection. I disagree in the comment about the staffing. We, when I was at Seaboard, we had to pull our offline inspection people online all the time. We were short staffed all the time at Seaboard. So there is a staffing what, problem. What, okay, so what are the implications of short staffing? Why should the public be concerned about this? Because when you pull an inspector, an offline inspector, online to fill an online vacancy, that offline task is not being done. Those tasks are being put into the computer, not performed. What are They're those tasks? Main handling, uh, sanitation, operational sanitation, check labeling, all kinds of things, HACCP, fecal, fecal contamination checks, all kinds of t tasks are not being done because that inspector is filling another spot. The plant is operating, as he said. Sure, they're operating, but they're short-staffed. They don't have the staff to perform all the tasks that they're supposed to be doing. So, so what does FSI need to do at the upper management level to do a better job? What do they need? In all of my 18 years of experience, I've never seen a di district manager, deputy district manager, ever visit a plant in the field. We need to have those district managers, deputy district managers, out of the office visiting the plant, talking to the inspectors. They don't even know the names of most of their inspectors. They need to be out in the field talking to people rather than sitting in the office. That's what they need to do, in my view. I want to thank uh, the witnesses for being here. Now, a number of things have been said. I've been watching uh, Mr. Mann uh, try to get into the response here. Is there anything you want to say to respond to anything that's been said? No, thank you. Uh, given the seriousness of the FSIS's role in assuring the safety of the food consumed by the American people. Uh, this subcommittee will maintain an active role of oversight of your division. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Shames for uh, the report, which I think will uh, provide some guidance, and I know you'll get a chance to go into it in depth, Mr. Mann. I hope you look at it carefully. And uh, Dr. Wyatt, uh, the country really owes you a debt of gratitude. You put your career on the line just to do the right thing. It's not easy for whistleblowers to take on uh, a bureaucracy, a federal establishment. And you knew the risks, and you took the risks. And, uh, and because of, of you, uh, there are going to be established metrics to assure that the public's consumption of certain types of food uh, is going to be more rigorously inspected and uh, that there'll be a little bit better assurance, a little more public confidence in, in, the, uh, in the process. So it's, uh, it's people like you are in a very proud tradition of individuals, good Americans who came forward and did the right thing even when it was against uh, their own personal interests. So this, uh, this committee is quite appreciative of, of your actions. And, and I think that the, um, uh, that the Department of Agriculture uh, owes you a public apology. And uh, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank the witnesses. Uh, this first panel is dismissed. And we're now going to go immediately to the second panel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.